and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we're talking some spoilers here about everything. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what is new with you, Alex? Um, I've been obsessing, like, to where it's a problem over the new Thor trailer. <gasps> My heart stopped when i watched that it's well like apparently the entire marvel cinematic universe is now guardians of the galaxy and that's just all right with me well it makes sense because they're gearing up for um the new the infinity crisis infinity war infinity war yeah yeah or whatever it's gonna be and that's sort of out in the universe so i mean it makes sense but also Mm -hmm. like okay i I need to like break down every piece of that trailer (laughs) let's do it the part that's like the most sci-fi to me is there's just like a shot of these really um like boxy ships flying away Mm, yeah and they're like they're like so simultaneously star wars but also guardians of the galaxy yeah just that real nice like retro sci-fi vibe exactly and i'm like i remember the first time i saw guardians of the galaxy i was like this is what i hope the new star wars is like (laughs) i don't know that, that feeling where it's just so like perfect yeah, and it's it's like it's almost like exuberantly science fiction. Yeah, and it's not like ashamed. Mm-hmm. And they're they're also yeah, doing the look- whole thing like Disney knows knows what they're doing. They they also have a lot of practical costumes and stuff. Yeah, and and it's just so fun to see Thor in those kinds of contexts because in yeah, the because past, he's, yeah, he's, he's usually in Asgard, which is, like, this perfect... Yeah, he's got the uh, fantasy context, or, yeah. like, the Avengers. But to see yeah. him in this, like, science fiction outer space alien land is very fun. It is. It is. Because all the other alien worlds he's been to in his other um, stories have been also fantasy. Yeah, it's the it's the sort of Norse mythology adjacent stuff, which exactly. makes sense. But like, yeah, let's get him out there into the rest of the world and see what that's got to offer. Yeah, this Planet Hulk business, I'm digging on. I like it. <laughs> oh man, have you seen the um the cartoon that's on Netflix? I haven't. No. It's worth watching. (laughs) Yeah, there's a bunch of really good Marvel uh, and honestly DC cartoons on Netflix that should be checked out. But uh, Um, oh man, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Blanchett! Oh my god, she's so cool. Okay, wait, wait. So, how familiar are you with um, like the Thor comics? Like, not at all. I'm I'm only marginally familiar, but I'm confused because they're calling her character Hella H E L A or H E L L A. I don't know. Wouldn't Hela. it need to be Helia? What do you mean? Because isn't Helia the the Norse name? Well, see, the character, as far as I'm aware, is supposed to be the goddess Hel, oh, okay. and it's just spelled H E L, and she's like the underworld goddess. Um, so I'm not sure why they've, the name is changed. I, is it, I don't know if it's changed in the comics or if it's just changed for the movie and they're like, we can't say hell, this is a Disney movie. But I think they, be careful though. Cause if, as soon as you type in Hella into Google, it's just urban dictionary and mm-hmm. slang. <laughs> yeah. Northern California slang. I, so I don't know what's going on there, but I don't really care because she's super cool and broke Mjolnir. So Okay, just like every like, just I can't. Just, her hair, her her makeup, her lips are like enormous that she's gonna like eat the world. Yeah, and you know what's cool? Because there is actually a Thor cartoon on Netflix. I think uh-huh. it's actually I think it's Thor versus the Hulk. Interestingly enough, um, but she's in it, and I swear, like she, Kate Blanchett is perfect she just looks exactly like this cartoon she's so cool and so perfect i i couldn't (laughs) stand it (laughs) and then like okay and then the song like i've never been a huge fan of that song i mean it it just never spoke to me so right but then it spoke to me and and then like as soon as they start singing and then you get that shot of kate blanchett with with her with her crown slash antlers (sighs) turning and she's just like I, everything I, I have to 
do a shout out to my Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> or after watching the trailer many times, I have to pull it up because I have to say it the way I originally said it. Um, yeah. I think we can all agree that we would let Kate Blanchett murder us. <laughs> yes. Asgard is dead, and that's just okay. <laughs> yeah, we're totally happy with it. I mean, she can, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. You can do whatever you want, Kate Blanchett. Kill Asgard? Okay. <laughs> That's all you, right. you know it's a big deal when, like, Loki having, like, a, a three-second uh, spot in that trailer means nothing. Like, everything else in that trailer was way better than that. <laughs> yeah. I will say, though, I did like his little dagger flip. That was a good moment. That was neat. That was neat. Um, I liked but, like, it. But, like, it just paled in comparison to everything else. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know what? Like, Hiddleston, he always draws attention when he's on the screen. Blanchett's going to give him a run for his money. She really is. Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody, and then and then Thor looks great with the haircut too. Yeah, I wasn't so and sure about it. Yeah, I know that helmet's rad, but like <laughs> I was iffy when I saw like the the production photos of him without his hair, and I was like, "What are you doing? Like your hair was, was getting was, longer, and now we just cut it off." But I like I it. Sure I like it. The character, but it definitely fits the actor. He looks really mm-hmm. good. Well, and I and I think it fits the circumstance, like judging exactly. by what's going on there. Like, like we've got this Ross space gladiator. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, what's up with you? <laughs> I have, I have an embarrassing story to tell. Okay, yeah. <laughs> A couple days ago, I almost got internet scammed. What? <laughs> it was. It's okay. I'm still not sure what they were after. But they definitely were scammers. So okay. I've been sort of job searching because I really need to be working full time. Yeah. And I was on ZipRecruiter. Um, and I found this job listing for like a receptionist job and, uh, you know, popped in my, my resume and I got a text message rather than a phone call saying like, hey, this is so and so from such and such company. We would like to schedule an interview with you. And I was like, rad, I'd love to schedule an interview with you. And they're like, we do our interviews on Google Hangouts. And I was like, huh, that's unusual, but okay, beats having to drive somewhere, I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I I ended up scheduling I had to get up very, very early. Uh in order to have this interview so that was fun um but so it went you know sort of like a normal job interview goes they asked the usual questions um and then they were like okay i'm going to pass this on to my hr manager please stand by and then like 15 minutes later they were like good news you're hired (laughs) and i was like what like after a 15-minute text interview? Okay. Um, and then they started getting into stuff, um, like, you know, asking the the usual questions that, you know, would be asked upon hire. And they were like, okay, so this is a work-from-home position, and we'll send you a laptop to do your work on, and we're going to send you a check so that you can buy the other supplies that you need. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, this is moving really, really fast. Like, it was very weird. I was like... And they didn't give me time to think, and that's what scammers do. They just want to sort of keep you off yeah. kilter so that you don't have time to think. Um, and, and at that point, they still had not asked me for any sensitive information, so that red yeah. flag didn't go up. Um, and they were like, here, we'll email you a- an electronic check, print it out, and use your mobile checking to like deposit it so that you can make these purchases you need to. And I'm like okay what like just already what are you what's going on and like and uh, you know they couldn't get my bank information that way so i'm not really sure what they were going for but i was like this is really really weird and they're being very pushy and like fast about this whole thing and it's really weirding me out so i was like "Mm," and i got in touch with the um hiring manager at the company that they claimed to be representing. And they were like, yeah, nope, that is not us. We, that we do not do interviews that way. That's a scammer. So I shut them down after that. But it was just the weirdest because I'm yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure what they were trying to get from me. Because there's like a, a check cashing scam, which is a thing where they like send you a check and then they like ask for money back. But I asked them like, so are you going to be requiring any of these funds returned to you? And they were like, nope, you don't need to give anything back. So I, I do not know what they were trying to do. 
I'm sure they're somewhere down the line they have an idea, but it's just that yeah, that's just really weird. It was weird and elaborate. Like I've never seen such an elaborate scam. So yeah, they they went on ZipRecruiter and like took down all the job listings that were claiming to be their company because they didn't have any listings up there on purpose. So well, they, yeah. they, they did a good thing then. I did. I woke up early in the morning and was inconvenienced by a scammer for the greater good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it was weird, though. Like, it, it became pretty apparent after a while that, like, this person was not necessarily the most fluent English speaker. Uh, yeah. Like, syntax well, was also, slowly breaking down. <laughs> get it, how, how early you got up, that's also an indicator, I think. Yeah. Because that might, that might be, like, time zone differences. Yeah, probably so. I don't know. It was really surreal, though. It was just a very bizarre experience. But anyway, that happened to me, and that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but today I ate a big plate of nachos, so I'm feeling yeah, good. Yeah, I saw your saw your Instagram picture after after it was either before or after that picture of the you soaking wet from walking. Yeah, home yeah. God, what a bad couple of days it's been. <laughs> no. I was worried. I was like, because the closet that I'm in, like, it's got like one of those slanty walls because it's the roof. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh, I hope the rain doesn't get loud and they can hear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gosh, northwest rain. But no, I've, it's been actually a fine couple of days. I just had some weird experiences. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, why don't we get into today's topic? Um, we are talking about the sort of big hot issue at the moment, which is diversity and representation in Hollywood. And uh, you saw Power Rangers, is that correct? Yes, I did. Tell me about it. So I went by myself because I just, I don't know, I didn't have the patience to wait for anybody to see it with me. <laughs> no and, shame. Well, because if you wait, sometimes you, you end up not seeing it, and I'm, I, that would have been disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought, I, I mean, I had a smile on my face the entire time, so that that's uh-huh. that's a plus. There were some aesthetic choices I did not particularly like. Mm. Um, it had some, some ugly visuals. Uh a but lot of movies than, have pretty ugly visuals these days. Especially, especially these days. Um, well, and, and some, and and I, some I, movies only have pretty visuals, so... <laughs> my thinking on sort of the aesthetic choices that that movie seemed to make is that it kind of seems appropriate, if only because back in the 90s, like, Power Rangers was so much a product of its time you know it looked like the 90s it looked like the things that were popular in the 90s so i think this is going for the equivalent now maybe yeah um i would say particularly when it when it comes to the zords um they look very much like transformers Mm. i didn't understand the mastodon zord uh which is the black ranger zord yeah Um, because in the original it was like a it was like a mammoth right uh, no, it was Mastodon. Mastodon! Like, I don't, yeah. Are, are, they sim- are they similar to mammoths, though? Yeah, they are similar animals. Okay. Well, because in the new movie, it's like a Mastodon beetle, because it has six legs. What? And it doesn't have, like, a, a trunk or anything. Well, I mean, are the other Zords just normal dinosaurs? Yeah. What? I mean, it, it, it looked cool, but I, I was just confused. Like, the whole thing is, like, they're prehistoric creatures. Like, like yeah, they're okay. dinos and a mastodon, which, you know, from a different era, but same concept, I guess. I think it was just interesting because it was also the Zord that had the most screen time. Hmm. Huh. So, I don't know. I would, I would, I, I want to, like, look into that and see why they chose that. Because it looks cool, and I just didn't get it quite away. Really, right away. The, um, Black Ranger was the Asian young man, correct? Yes, yes. So, that was, um... They didn't publicize it, which I think was a really smart move. They weren't like, we're doing the same thing the original show did, but not in, like, a slightly subversive racist way. Um, yeah, not in the 90s way. Not in the 90s way. Whereas, you know, if ev- I'm sure everybody knows, like, in the in the original show, they had some diverse characters, but the Asian actress was wearing the yellow Power Ranger suit. Mm-hmm. The black actor was wearing the black Power Ranger suit. In the new one, the black actor is the blue ranger Mm -hmm. and the character is so so close to the original tommy is it tommy i forget i get the name so mixed up 
No, it's Billy. That's who it is. Billy, yes. Uh, okay, he's okay, so, okay. He's so close. To, he's such, like, I don't know, if Power Rangers were Zodiac or whatever. Like, or, Yeah, like, or, that's the vibe of the yes, Blue Ranger. The total Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, we should start doing that, like, sort of, a, you know, maybe maybe it's got to just be a like Blue a... Ranger. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like the new Sex in the City. Are you a Samantha? Are you a Yellow Ranger? Are you... <laughs> that is so... Yeah, exactly. That's so good. Um, and then the Asian actor, he's the Black Ranger. Mm-hmm. And then um, the Yellow Ranger, I, I believe she's Hispanic. I'm not sure. Yeah, she's Latina. Latina, yeah. And she's... I wish they would have spent a little more time on her um, because I felt Mm. like she sort of starts off as like the stereotypical, I don't really like you guys. I'm sort of doing my own thing. Like, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, And then they're red and pink or, you know, they're the same. Like they're both white. Yeah. And, um, and the yellow ranger, she's, um, she's queer, correct? Yeah. So at a pivotal point in the movie where they're trying to figure out how they, how they're supposed to transform in, into, you know, their armor. Um, I believe it's uh, the Black Ranger. Zane, I think, is the character's name. Yeah. Oh, no, Zach, sorry. He's like, you know what? Maybe we should, like, get to know each other. Maybe that's what how to get it work. So they all sort of, like, start telling their, their truth or their secrets. And she starts off by saying just, like, her parents don't really understand. Uh, they sort of have high expectations of her. And then... She's like, they sort of want her to have a boyfriend, and then she's like, that's just not me, and then one of the other kids is like, what about a girlfriend, and then she's sort of just like, I don't know. It, it's very, yeah, she basically, yeah. Is, it's implied that she is, is queer. Yeah, well, as much as it's it's nice to have them actually say the literal words, implication is surely better than nothing. And that's sort of how this movie functions um even when so uh, early on in the movie you find out that billy has autism yeah um or is autistic i should say and he sort they don't they don't ever say the word autism he just says oh i'm on the spectrum which i, I found recently that's like just the way it's sort of sewn into media like I, yeah, I was you know, to, I was still watching on uh, Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, Will on Graham's on the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. So the, I guess that's sort but, of like but the. He does the, actually say to to Hannibal's credit, he says, "I'm closer to autistics and Aspergers than sociopaths." That's true. That's true. But yeah, so that that's another sort of, I don't want to say like check mark box checked or whatever, um, but I I think that for the character it makes total sense and. Yeah, I mean and it's he's, important. He's such, it's, it is important, and 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 one of my favorite things about it is it's like none of nothing in the movie could happen without Billy. Mm, like he nice. drives the plot forward for a majority of it, and I always say, especially when my mom likes make, makes like silly remarks about like vaccines or whatever, because I don't know. She oh just, no! She just Facebook posts and she'll say something. But we I'll don't like, need to get into that one though. <laughs> definitely don't. But but my sort of feeling is like. People with autism, people with Down syndrome, like, they have so much to offer the world. Well, yeah, they're just people. They're just people, and they have talents and insight and opinions that are, a lot of time we have no idea, we can't even, like, comprehend it, but it's... It's well, it's you. it's more that it's we just can't you know it's it's harder for that communication to happen. They, they you know it's, yeah. it's just they you know someone may have a different way of communicating, and you just have to you know make the effort to come to them and understand because they're just people and they just have thoughts and ideas and feelings and just like anybody. And I think it's important that we've got this representation now showing. You know, especially showing kids, um, like on Sesame Street, this uh, this new autistic character that's, uh, gosh, I, I can't think of her name. Is it Abby? No, Abby is is Elmo's friend, and she's been a character for a long time. Okay, yeah, then yeah. Do you do you remember the the new autistic character on Sesame Street's name? I don't know it off the top of my head, um, mm, but I, did I feel watch bad the, for forgetting. I did watch the clip on Facebook. Um, but yeah, just you know, teaching people like, listen, it's. It's not weird. It's just not what you're used to, and that's fine. Yeah. 
So I wanted to ask your thoughts because, um, you know, we're going to eventually end up talking about Ghost in the Shell inevitably, but um, adjacent to that, the character of Rita Repulsa is played by a white lady. And I wondered what your thoughts were on that. So um, I have a friend on Twitter. He's a, he's a poet. He's uh, I think he's at least half Japanese and he was, he made a post on, on Twitter saying that he's, he's appreciative of a lot of the things that Power Rangers is doing, but he thought it was at least a little weird that they took the original character of Rita Repulsa, who was Asian and yeah, well, I mean, because she was just the actress from the original show that yeah. Power Rangers was based on. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, they, that show that ripped the scenes from. <laughs> yeah, the, gosh, that was a weird time in television when we were just taking Japanese shows and cutting them up and <laughs> making yeah. them again. Um, and I thought that was, I think a lot of people would probably see that as, like, either nitpicking or it's, like, a really small detail. But I think, especially for um, for Asian people, like, they get so little representation in Hollywood. Yeah. That it would yeah. have been it would have been really cool to see like a really badass Asian actress beating up the Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, that would have been So is she is she like a sort of a, a an active antagonist in this Yeah, 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 she is. She's not she doesn't just appear at the end. Yeah. Um, she's actually like really violent like multiple times she has them at death, like, she's about to kill them. Yikes. Like, she's really scary, and she, I think Elizabeth Banks, Banks, who does play her, I think does a great job, and I and I like Elizabeth Banks. Yeah, I um, like her, too. But I think they definitely could have, you know... Made a smarter choice. They probably could have either made a smarter choice, or just, like, tried a little harder. I think she's... She, I don't think she's, like, the obvious choice for a villain, um, but... She was probably like, I want to do this so badly that they were like, okay, yeah, we need a we need a, a hard hitter on the team since we're going to have a lot of newcomers. Yeah. But, they, I mean, I don't know how large a part of the cast Brian Cranston is, but Brian Cranston's there. He, he's barely, okay, so. The what is with Brian Cranston barely being in the movies that he's in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, well, let's do this Japanese import. Brian Cranston, be in it for a second. <laughs> exactly. And that brings up Godzilla, which is in the same Yeah, oh, game, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what I was referencing. Um, because, and that's all about, like, they're in Japan for, what, like, 15 minutes, and then it's all back to L.A.? Um, <laughs> uh, so the, there's a there's a prologue in the beginning of the movie that's, like, the, the Power Rangers before these ones. Yeah. And uh, Brian Cranston, who plays... Uh, Zordon. Zordon, thank you. Um, he was an original. He was the original Red Ranger. Yes, and, and he's then... like in this like weird alien makeup that's like sort of humanish, but not really. Okay, so previous Power Rangers were aliens. They were aliens, yeah, and they were sort of humanoid. Um, and I and from the looks of it, I didn't get like a good enough look, but it looked like they were all sort of different races of human of aliens, which sort of fits into the whole different races of. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, um, I don't know about different but, species versus just different, you know, skin colors, but, you yeah, know, I get yeah, it. Yeah, that, that gets into a really messy, dangerous... It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Yeah, but it's, it's sort of like the whole Guardians of the Galaxy, where just, like, a lot of sci-fi do, like, a, a band of different species. Yeah. That... No, I'm with it. It's Honestly, I just think it's funny. It's like, yeah, we have this diversity of alien species, uh, but this round, let's just do humans. <laughs> well, and you know, I I don't know enough of what their decisions were, but it could have they could have all been the same race, just different looking. To I don't know, um, but we know very little about Power Rangers lore, especially this part where they're just like making stuff up. Yeah, but anyway, he's in the very beginning, and then he like fuses with their spaceship and becomes Zordon, um, and he's kind of a <laughs> like a huge jerk. <laughs> Like, he's always like, you guys need to learn how to transform so that I can, so you, the ship can get its power back and I can come back to life. Ah, oh, so it's a self Because I, I, I remember Zordon in the cartoon, or not, not the cartoon, but the, the old TV show, um, just being like, Rangers, go do the thing now. I'm yeah. the Wizard of Oz. Like, <laughs> he didn't really have a thing, but, yeah, you know, it was a very simple show. Honestly. 
also, I, I, I feel it's important to point out, like, the Power Rangers is still a show. Like, it's still airing. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Each season, it's it's usually, um, well, it's usually like one or two, one to three seasons long is each like segment and they're each segment has its own new rangers and their own like theme for what their uh, zords and costumes are going to look like so right now they're back at dinosaurs but in the past they've done ninjas they've done yeah cars they've done... well like i've sort of observed it from afar you know seeing yeah. the the action figure aisle and being like so that's what the power rangers look like right now interesting but i like i have no idea what is going on or any any (laughs) continuity (laughs) within the power rangers but i suppose it's all sort of irrelevant to the movie the movie seems like it's just sort of like a new power rangers iteration yeah it's sort of like a a a rethinking of the original um yeah that's what it seemed like continuation in any sort um but one of the articles that i found while we were discussing this topic was um it's on inverse.com and it's called power rangers and the realness of poor asian americans yes i read that and that was really interesting yeah and i think it's uh so we're going back to zach who plays the black ranger Mm -hmm. and he sort of comes in about a third of the way through and they all sort of happens happen to meet up in the same place and the only two of them, three of them know each other. Um, but he's there and he's sort of like this cocky, sure of himself, very physical character. And the article talks about how a lot of Asian or Asian American characters, especially in movies are sort of portrayed as like intellectual and. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the stereotype of the like honor roll Asian kid. Yeah, and, 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 and they were pointing out that he is, is not that, you know, he's very... His family quick. is struggling. Yeah, and that's another thing, like, a lot of, again, stereotypical portrayals of an Asian family, or Asian American family, is, like, either upper middle class, or, I would say probably upper middle class, and they have... Yeah, usually. They usually have, like, a lot of... I don't know, just a lot of, it's, 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 it's just sort of very yeah, stable. Yeah, sort of and, the, the white collar lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, where they, and, but this, in this case, it's, it's just him and his mom who is, um, dying. He's still, yeah. She, yeah, and she's dying because he, he, he makes a comment at a point where he's like, she's dying and I have absolutely no idea what I'll do when she's gone. And that's like, for A, a kid's movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's heavy. like a big deal. It's heavy, but it's also I don't know. It, I think it just yeah. I just, I just thought it was yeah. really cool that they would not adhere to stereotypes. I don't know. What yeah, point. yeah. Like, no, no. That they, they, they're the they're showing. They're. I mean, part of representation is well-rounded representation. Like you can't just represent a whole you know race of people in America based on like this sort of popular stereotype. Like that's that barely representation if that's all you get it yeah um i kind of wanted to just read one quick little paragraph um because i felt like it was like a a a good sort of some summation of of everything we're talking about Um, yeah and we will um also just put some links in our show notes uh because obviously we can't just like we can't describe these articles in a good enough way like people should just read them on their own but we'll do our best to sort of give you the gist of what we're talking about yeah especially because a lot of the things we're talking about um are things that we don't know about um yeah I'm... yeah exactly like full disclosure i am a white cisgendered uh bisexual woman in a heterosexual relationship so i've got a lot of you know face value privilege going on here <laughs> yeah um so and 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 so that's why I, we, we really wanted to try and get this subject a little bit more attention. We wanted to pro- attention and we wanted to be really detailed with, with sort of stuff that we can point people to because we don't know necessarily what we're talking about. We're just sort of yes. showing, showing what's going on. Yeah, I read a thing that someone more qualified wrote. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but here's the little, here's the, the paragraph. Um, the superhero genre which traffics in fantasy fulfillment is primed to usher Lynn's Black Ranger and a 
new look at the complexities of Asian American life. In the shadow of Iron Fist and Scarlett Johansson and Ghosts in the Shell, Power Rangers has become the unexpected dose of oxygen for an audience suffocating under labels and invisibility. Zack is a rebel, charging into action with heart and brawn over his brains, flipping stereotypes on its head, and proving that there are other ways of Asian American for Asian Americans to succeed without cutting off Asian culture. And so yeah. that sort of, you know, brings up a lot of the other elephants in the room. Um, yes. But, but also sort of, you know, sums up how important Zack is. Definitely. Um, and it mentioned uh, Ghost in the Shell, which I would definitely like to, to touch upon. I, I found this really, really fascinating article um, on The Verge uh, called Ghost in the Shell, an anime's troubled history with representation uh, written by Emily Yoshida. And um, gosh, because I've been kind of mulling over the implications of just making an American Ghost in the Shell movie in the first place, uh, and who to even cast in it. Like, how do, how do we even go about this? And um, she eventually seems to sort of come around to the conclusion that maybe it just doesn't even work to cast a living human in this role. <laughs> uh, like, maybe you just can't adapt it into live action because of this really complicated history uh, of anime. Uh, so she she talks for a long time about sort of how anime came about stylistically. Uh, in short, it was made to appeal to foreign uh markets especially americans like yeah. that that visual style is sort of based around the japanese exporting toys after world war ii and their own sort of historically japanese style uh of creating characters just wasn't that appealing to um white people <laughs> they was too japanese looking and so they started looking into disney and other you know popular western styles and saying like okay well we'll just do that we'll just make characters look kind of like that and you know early anime is very 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 heavily influenced by walt disney um and so it's sort of this weird thing where japanese people don't necessarily view anime characters as being Japanese. I think a lot um, of people I've spoken to, a lot of white people I've spoken to feel the same way. Uh, yeah. They, they, they're they like, oh, yeah, it, they, supposedly they're Japanese characters because they live in, you know, Japanese cities, but they, they're, I don't know, people always remark about how, oh, they don't look Japanese or they don't look, you know. Yeah. And, and, and it's because they're not supposed to. They're, you know, they're supposed to look like they're Cinderella. To be like, yeah, the, the everyman sort of thing. But with yeah, hair. sort of. <laughs> you know, every man with spiky hair. But um, it's a really, really fascinating look at, you know, the, the, this journalist talks about sort of asking people in Japan what they think of, you know, a white actress playing this character um, of uh, Motoko, and they're like what like they don't really even understand the question you know they they're asked like do you think that these characters are being whitewashed and they're like what like what do you even mean by that and they're like well we could i guess we just figured yeah a, a white actress would play that role like obviously well, and they, well, they don't have like, a problem with it in japan so it's just like a non-issue yeah and well i mean i think that 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 makes a lot of sense because they don't they don't have a history of non-representation you know like they're Japanese in Japan and so all you know on TV it's all Japanese people and you know in their movies it's all Japanese people no so it's not a them out of their movies exactly so like it's it's a it's an issue for Americans and Asian Americans in particular in a way that it's yeah. just not an issue for Asian people in Asia and that makes a lot of sense so when people say like well the Japanese are okay with this it's like well they're not they're not the people we should be asking. They're not the people in question. Like we're we're not talking about taking you know we're we're not taking roles away from Japanese people in Japan. We're taking roles away from Japanese people and other Asian people in the United States. Yeah. More interesting parts of this article. Yeah, she sort of ends up 
concluding that, especially because the character, you know, she's not, she's not even, she's not, doesn't have a human body. Like, that's sort of a big plot point <laughs> is that yeah. her body is is synthetic and she's in fact supposed to be a very standard model she's she's a mass produced cyborg um and that you know is the concept is that that helps her sort of remain inconspicuous which is a great thought when you know you're living in a world where robots and cyborgs are ubiquitous you want to be the cyborg that no one's going to notice if you're out there doing crazy you know special detective stuff so like maybe i mean maybe motoko is sort of because the when you watch the anime um the people who aren't like normal humans you know the enhanced humans the cyborgs the robots they look different they're drawn differently than the people who are you know basically cyborgs and humans look different because the cyborgs are like made to look nice made to look special you know they're not they're not constrained by what an actual human looks like and so like maybe maybe Motoko really ought to look more like an anime character like just like a like a real living anime character that just reminds me of their original idea to they did screen tests with oh either, well, yeah trying to make her look asian trying to make her look asian with either makeup or or special effects and, yeah. and, and that was that the wrong way, thing to do that's, that's not how you make it more anime but like and I, and I don't... Well, yeah, like, in fact, that almost makes it less anime, right? Like, if yeah. anime characters are supposed to emulate Western cartoons, why would making Scarlett Johansson look like a Japanese woman make it look more like anime? And and how would that... Uh, <laughs> make anyone happy? <laughs> make anyone happy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, no, worst of both worlds, turns out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, on, but on the topic of uh, making her less human looking yeah i i would shudder at like a complete uh cg character yeah Uh, that would be weird too and and i think that's why eventually the writer just comes to the conclusion like i don't know if i can even picture this character as being played by an actress at all anything but animation yeah, and it honestly, I think that there is something to that. Maybe anime can just stay anime. I know that in Japan they do a lot of live action adaptations of anime, and they're welcome to do that. And they're they're fun times. I watched the Death Note movies. Oh boy, that Netflix ne- <laughs> Death Note. I don't know about <laughs> that. Another, yeah, another. footnote. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the 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 original Death Note movies, and it was fun. It was interesting. I mean, it's a thing they do in Japan, and that's fine. Um. But, like, it's especially weird for, like, an American audience, for for Hollywood to take this thing that doesn't belong to them and clearly they don't seem to really understand super well and just say, well, let's just adapt it. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't need to be done. I think anime is fine just staying anime. Yeah, and, like, I, 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 Ghost in the Shell is not obscure by any means. No, but, I'd say it's, like, like second you... only to Akira as far as, like, notoriety goes. Yeah, like, why do you need to make it, like, marketable and mass-producible? I don't know. It's just, it's already successful. Like, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's... it's already a thing. Like, I don't know. And, and it's a, I have very complicated feelings on it because I also believe that, you know, adapting things is a cool and interesting and worthwhile thing to do. But I'm just not sure that it's, in this instance, really very relevant or appropriate. Yeah, and I, I, I remember seeing the trailer for the first time, and I was like, there are some really cool visuals they've tried to do, almost, um, almost Fifth Element esque, or, yeah, or, you or, know, or, who, um, or even Blade Runner. You know, they're very similar. <laughs> well, that, and it's funny that you say that because so much of the cyberpunk genre. Yeah draws on the original ghost in the shell yeah in fact it's it's kind of funny it's it's sort of like alien the movie alien how like you go back and you watch it and it feels so cliche but that's just because everything that came after it what was just drawing from it (laughs) yeah (laughs) but who did direct um this film version of ghost in the shell rupert sanders i don't know who rupert sanders is so let's so never mind Uh, (laughs) um (laughs) 
Okay, so uh, Rupert Sanders directed it. He uh, is known for Snow White and the Huntsman. <laughs> okay, so I like that movie, but again, that one's like really random choices for a remake. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. At least he has a little bit more sort of claim over that story <laughs> culturally. <Yeah. laughs> and they're still working on adapting akira i mean here's really the thing about anime is it's almost like they want to remake it in live action as though it's like yeah we'll do it bigger and better but it's like no can't animation be sort of the end goal like can't that be the thing that it's meant to be it's not like i mean it, it almost seems like people approach animation as being inferior to yeah. live action and so it's like oh let, ghost in the shell that's so good we should do it in live action see and and my my argument against that against people that are like that is yeah imagine a live action spirited away you know there are some how people who would think that that would be cool it would that, suck that, it, it's a terrible most, idea that is the but, most like horrific thought i can imagine right now but conceptually i bet there are a lot of people that would think that would be such a cool concept because i think it's ingrained into people that like that is the superior format and so they'd be like oh man can you imagine it wow it would be so cool but no it wouldn't be so cool because the original is perfect it's perfect and it doesn't need to be changed it is and i think these these things that we're talking about especially are so essentially animated it's yeah. it's part of what they are it's it's crucial to the product that it is animated yeah there's there's no like reason it shouldn't be anything else yeah it's it's made to to be that way and and i think another way to a, a sort of way to look at it is like a lot of um uh japanese animators and uh, artists manga artists their dreams were to be animators and, and artists, you know? Like, yeah, that's They worked the their point. whole lives to make these beautiful works of art, only to have them shipped overseas and have people want to, like, make them not pretty. Make something else out of them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird compulsion. And, and yes, and they envisioned them in their minds as animation and drawn art. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big I'm a big nerd for animation. Like I love I, I love comics and I love cartoons. It's in fact I probably watch cartoons more than I watch live action media. <laughs> like I really do. I'm I'm fascinated by it. I you know as a as an artist myself, you know it's it's so inspiring to see these things. Um, I love animation because you can do things that no other storytelling visual storytelling can do. Well, yeah, I mean, some brought up and, you know, <laughs> there are some jokes to be made, but ultimately, like, you know, y it doesn't cost more to draw a giant alien armada than it does to draw a small room with a chair in it. Like, it's, <laughs> you, you're not constrained by, you know, budgetary capabilities. You can, I mean, obviously, animation can be a very, very costly, and time intensive thing to do, but ultimately, it's not really going to to cost more to set anything or do anything. Yeah. And it's so cool. But then of course, you know, when a when a comics writer is like, "Oh yeah, it's it's great because I can just tell my artist to draw anything." And the artist is like, "Damn you. <laughs> that page took 5 hours." But <laughs> um I think another, you know, before we sort of wrap up another uh, sort of franchise that's doing some very interesting things um, as far as representation goes uh, for for good and for ill is Marvel um, to bring it back around uh, with their with their sort of Netflix series because we've got of course um, Jessica Jones which is a really f fantastic and thoughtful portrayal of post traumatic stress disorder post traumatic stress oh gosh just really chilling um, and fair representation of a, a, a survivor of abuse mm -hmm. and that's super duper cool and now they're gonna be you know and then they've got luke cage which is luke cage <laughs> it's so good and uh and then of course we've got iron fist 
Yeah, <laughs> and and I know of Iron Fist um, because in I think it was probably my last year of college, we were just looking for something to watch on Netflix, and we ended up watching like a young Spider-Man and Friends show. Um, okay. And he was one of the like friends. So that's that's my experience with Iron Iron Fist. Um, but yeah, well, and the thing I mean, people say like, well, Danny Rand is a white guy. Um, and it's like, okay, well, first of all, um, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can cast whoever we want to. I don't know that it's necessarily crucial to the character that he be white. <laughs> but, and people say, like, well, because, you know, we're getting into Orientalism, it could get really hairy if we've got an Asian guy playing this very stereotypical Asian character. Yeah. So to have a white guy, we mitigate it. But it's like, okay, well, how about we fix the other direction? How about we take him and we make him Asian and we fix the racist stuff? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, the, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I haven't watched the video since I watched it the first time, but um, on Facebook there was a Vox video talking about uh, Scarlett Johansson and talking about, I believe it was also talking about um, Iron Fist, and it, it brings up the whole sort of dicey you know what do we do do we just keep it the way it was originally and have it be racist or do we have do we go the other way you know and mm-hmm. how there's, there's not necessarily a solution um well I mean, part of the problem with iron fist is that it just wasn't very good patently like <laughs> like whoever they would have cast in that like it was just a poorly written and cruddy show you know so what? They, should've, they honestly should have cast the guy from arrow who plays green arrow because it's the same show <laughs> <laughs> but better <laughs> it's the same show but better and much better uh, yeah no it, I, iron fist was really really terrible and the, the guy who plays danny whose name i've forgotten because he's a forgettable man uh <laughs> he was defending the character he was saying how he feels like part of the problem with people responding badly is that people don't want to see a show these days about a privileged white man. And it's like, okay, but listen, though, but listen, though, everyone's favorite Avenger is Iron Man. So, like, they're they're basically coming from the same avenue, the idea of, like, yup, I'm this white boy who inherited my daddy's fortune, um... Except Tony Stark is a character who he he does work hard and he, you know, he he did make himself who he is. You know, he's benefiting from his privilege, but he's working hard and he's he's earning things. Whereas it never feels like Danny earns anything at any point. (laughs) He doesn't he doesn't, you know, Tony, he he builds these things and he's a genius. And Danny is just a a guy who got some magic powers because he crashed in an airplane. So it's like, oh, boohoo, yes, yes, you crashed in an airplane and that's terrible, but you cannot ride on that forever. That's not good enough. So um, like, I I think that it's a I think it's a a, a cruddy defense because no, I, I I mean we've got plenty of of privileged white guy characters in the Marvel universe that people love. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't remember if it was the Vox video or if it was just someone on Twitter, um, but I think somebody suggested at least a potential, not solution, but, you know, a difference that they could have done is, like, have a woman of color play Danny. Fascinating idea. Because, like, sure, you might not get through, past the, the flaws in the original story, but at least it's not, you know, the privileged white male lead, you know? Yeah, and, and like nobody cares about Iron Fist. Like nobody. Ca- <laughs> yeah. If anything, that was the one you could have been the most creative with. Nobody cares about Iron Fist. And you know, like yeah, this 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 idea of like, well, you know, it's it's a character that's just really reeking of Orientalism. So to make him played by an Asian character might exacerbate that. Um, and that's what they did with the Mandarin in Iron Man Three, for better or worse. Um, and yeah, like uh, my response to that is the same. Like, uh, you know, you could yeah, that's one way of doing it. But I think that the the sort of more thoughtful and ultimately productive way of doing that is to make the character Asian, but not in a racist way. <laughs> yeah, that's um, easy to maybe, fix. <laughs> maybe maybe hire uh, Asian American writers to do the whole thing. 
What a novel idea! But where would you find those people? I don't think they exist. I think they're a myth. Definitely not in Hollywood, not trying to make a buck, you know? No, there's none of those are out there. No struggling artists, no, you know... No young up-and-comers, nobody who deserves a shot. Right. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so, so Marvel's got sort of a mixed bag going on these days. Yeah, and, and I don't, again, I'm not the person to come up with a solution, but I'm happy to <laughs> support a solution that others deem worthy. <laughs> yeah. Smarter um, people I, than us have thought about this yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, smarter people than us have thought about it. Smarter people than us have talked about it. Um, we're just, I don't know. We're just trying to, trying to wade through this. We, trying we to wade want, through. Well, here, we want better literature. Yeah, give me better stories. Give me more I, interesting stories. By having more diverse stories told, literature and readers and viewers of literature will benefit. And not just as readers or viewers, but as people you will benefit. Absolutely. I don't know where that came from, but that was pretty... <laughs> yeah, you, you got... The, yeah. <laughs> Very thoughtful, astute comment there. Uh, but I, I'm reminded of this great quote from Whoopi Goldberg from the fantastic documentary Trekkies. <laughs> uh, she's because Whoopi Goldberg is a long, long time fan of Star Trek, and she was actually inspired, or at least you know, sort of the the. It's implied that she was inspired to become an actress herself because of Nichelle Nichols in yeah. Star Trek. She she tells this story about how when she was little she was flipping through the TV and Star Trek came on and she saw Nichelle Nichols and she was just astounded and she she shouted to her mom, Mama, Mama, there's a black lady on the TV and she ain't no maid. And I love that story. Uh, you know, because it's it's so important for for children, for people growing up to see people like themselves doing all manner of things. And it's also important for children to see people unlike themselves. Yes, yes. Right. Well, it's it's important for white children to yes. see people <laughs> unlike themselves. Well, I, think, I think... You know, particularly white children, but I think also, you know, um, people that are different races can benefit Seeing, from yeah, other. Yeah, for because, sure. You know, white people just need to take a back seat for a while. Yeah, because we benefit from racism, so we need it the most, but, you know, other people, <laughs> yeah. can, other people can be prejudiced, um, yes. which is not, Fair point. not great, but you know, they don't necessarily benefit from that, but, um, but yeah, Not we, like all, we, do. we really all need to just see each other doing yeah, things. We need to see each other and believe each other. Yes. Oh um, boy. But, but bringing up Star Trek, um, I, I was on the whole topic of Japanese American and Asian American actors, uh, George T- Takei. Mm, love him. He was in Star Trek. Um, he, he had a, a great documentary. I don't know if it was on Netflix or if it was just for Netflix or I think I watched it on Netflix. But anyway, the, the documentary is called To Be To K. Yeah, I remember that coming out. And it's about him. It's a you, You'd think just based on what we know about him that it would probably be more of a, a, a documentary focused on his sexuality. But honestly, it's really, well, he really went. Focused. His family went through a whole lot in World yeah. War II. The documentary is mainly focused on his his heritage and his his struggles in Hollywood and his struggles, you know, in in Japanese internment camps. Um, mm-hmm. So that's just another example of we really need to just listen to each other and and see more stories and and give uh, like Star Trek did give more actors chances. Yeah, and I and I, I think that it's fair to say that. As time has gone on, we've only gotten better and better at that, but there's obviously still a very long way to go before anybody should feel satisfied. Yeah, I would say there's uh, a great wall. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you. (laughs) All right, well, I think that might cover it. What do you think? Anything else you wanted to touch on before we say goodbye? Um, I don't think I had anything else. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening, everybody. 
And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.